Hello, I'm Marcia Cruzan. Welcome to Seniors Today, a monthly program produced by the Commission on Aging devoted entirely to issues and interests of Montgomery County seniors. This month we learn about the long-term care ombudsman program serving individuals living in nursing homes and assisted living facilities in Montgomery County. And we talk to the project director of Ultra Montgomery, a program that brings the latest technology training to county seniors. But first, I'm particularly pleased to welcome the Secretary of the Maryland Department of Aging, Rona Kramer. Welcome, Thank Secretary you. Kramer. We're delighted to have you here, and I know that you are excited to tell us about a couple of brand new statewide programs that benefit Montgomery County, not Montgomery County, all of Maryland seniors. That's so right. let's talk about first the Senior Call Check Check-in Service and Notification Program. Senior Call Check was a concept of Delegate Ben Kramer, the very handsome Delegate Ben Kramer, who happens to be my brother, uh, in conjunction with the Department of Aging, a great example of how the legislature and the executive branch can work together. It's a program that provides a daily check-in for those seniors who don't have someone to talk to every day. Unfortunately, there are many, many people who go days without really having a conversation on a regular basis with someone who knows that they should be speaking daily. And we do have many incidents where someone uh, falls, breaks a bone, can't get to the phone, and no one knows that they're lying there on the floor. So Senior Call Check is rolling out in a pilot program right now, and all Maryland, all Maryland residents 65 and older are eligible. So, so any resident in Maryland of that age, 65 or older, can apply for this? Yes, Register yes. For it. And all they have to do is sign up and then they're going to get a phone call each day. All they have to do is pick up the phone uh, and that indicates that they're okay and they get to choose the time of day within about a two hour window that they want the call to come in so that it's convenient for them. So what happens if they can't pick up the phone at that time or um, they're on the phone at that time? And if they're on the phone, terrific. The, uh, it's indicated to our system that they're okay because they're on the phone. If they don't pick up the phone, they get two more follow-up phone calls that day. Should they not answer the third call, a call goes to their emergency backup, a name and phone number that they've given us in advance. So you get to identify the person you want to get the notification. Exactly, okay. yes. So that's so, often a family member or a close friend. Exactly. Right. So you want to have someone that you know you can depend upon to take that call and then check on you. When did this program start? and, and uh, we're, How long has it been going on? We're currently recruiting the first 2,000 people to roll the program out. So we need people who are interested. It's a pilot, get started, sign up immediately. As soon as we do, we'll be rolling it out. And, uh, and then at that point, we can have all of the glitches worked out and go live. Uh, for everyone on a permanent basis. And I would, I'd like to note that you can uh, disenroll at oh. any time that you want. And who actually answers the phone or makes the phone calls to the senior? We're using a system that places the call okay. and it also has the advantage of allowing us to send messages. So if you're a resident living uh, in an area where we're expecting a major snowstorm, we can, when you pick up the phone, we can be sending you a message that says, you know, we're expecting a major snowstorm. You may not be able to get out for four or five days. Do you have enough food? Right. Oh, do you need any assistance? If you do, 
call this number and we'll give them an opportunity to key into our other services at would, the Department of Aging. Would you like to tell us, I know we'll put something on for the website for people who want to go on the website and look at it. Uh, do you want to give us the phone number? That, that would be great. Okay. The phone number is 1-800-243-3400. Two five, option four. Wonderful, and that and and the website will be posted as well, so people watching will be able to see that. Um, can we talk a little bit about the program you launched yesterday? Uh, yesterday, you you announced a program called Maryland Community for Life. Uh, tell us about it. Great new program that we're starting at. Uh, the Maryland Department of Aging that is not being done anywhere else in the country. It, uh, it, it came to us about three years ago in reviewing all the programs that we have currently for seniors across the country that we're serving people only after they've become very fragile and have issues that are bringing them very, very close to having to move into a higher level of care, assisted living or a nursing home. And what we really need to do with no new federal funding for our programs and a huge explosion of seniors is we've got to move services further up the timeline. So with our Communities for Life, what we're doing is bringing uh, services that are non-medical to make it easy to live at home for a lifetime. And we're doing that in partnership with some very well established nonprofits who serve seniors who already um, are in the field and who are working with the Department of Aging. And we're commu um, creating communities that have fixed boundaries. You join, you pay a membership fee, and that varies uh, across the state uh, depending on what services are provided, but it's a minimal fee. And you get three basic services that will allow you to stay at home for years longer than otherwise possible. Well, in 30 seconds, can you sum up what those three services are? Absolutely. They are home maintenance, so you'll have a trusted maintenance person to come into your home whenever you need it, take care of maintenance, and we preserve assets that way. There is a service navigator, so if you're at the point where you need assistance, you can get, you, you know who to call, who knows all the services available, and the third is transportation. Wonderful. Well, it is a, a very exciting program, and I think that you know we know that uh, older people across the state are going to really be able to take advantage of, of a wonderful service. So we wish you luck with this. Thank we you. We thank you very much for being here, and uh, uh, look forward to hearing more about it in, in months and years to come. Thank so you. It's always my pleasure. When we return, we'll learn about looking out for the interest of seniors living in long-term care facilities. So please stay with us, we'll be right back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees and drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov.
visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Welcome back to Seniors Today. The Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program serves more than 8,100 individuals living in 34 nursing homes and 225 assisted living facilities in Montgomery County. The program supports a group of volunteer ombudsman representatives and has received national recognition. Joining me to tell us more about it today are Eileen Bennett, the program manager of the Montgomery County Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program, and Arthur Lappin, a 21-year volunteer ombudsman. Welcome to Seniors Today. Thanks for having us. Uh, we are very interested in hearing what is the Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program. Well, first of all, I always tell people ombudsman is the best kept secret word. It's the great, pu great puzzle word and it's a wonderful concept. We are based out of a citizens advocacy network and we work on behalf of residents living in long-term care communities. We basically are uh, preserving their rights helping them through um, very difficult situations in uh, licensed communities. The reality is, as you put two people under one roof, you can have some problems. When you have more than two people under one roof, you can have many problems. The Ombudsman program is designed to help the residents get their voice heard and resolution to the problems that they bring to our attention. So, uh who uses these services? Any resident that lives in a nursing home or an assisted living community can contact the Ombudsman program and there's no fee for service. You don't have to pay anything. We come regularly. We have a regular presence in the large places. We have volunteers like Art who come about once a week, sometimes a little more often, um, to meet residents when there aren't any issues going on so that at the point where there might become a problem, they know who can help them through it. So Arthur, tell me, what is it that the volunteers do? What do you do when you go there? I have, in my mind, I have two primary, uh, primary responsibilities. One is to educate, the other is to advocate. And when I talk about educating, educating the resident, uh, the family members, and the staff of the long-term care facility as to statutorily mandated resident rights, both federal and state advocate uh, when somebody has an issue with one of the rights, my, my job is to make sure that those rights are respected. Mm -hmm. And there are a myriad of issues. You can't imagine how many issues there are. What are some of the major issues, major well, type, most common issues? Well, the, there's always food issues because people lived at home and they had their own home cooking. Then they go to an institution and it's institutional food. Uh, abuse issues. And a lot of the abuse takes place between residents, not staff. There's always care issues, uh, answering the call bell, changing clothes, getting new clothes. Uh, there are family issues. There are a lot of family issues. And I tell families that I am a resident advocate, not necessarily a family advocate, because there are times when the residents' views diverge with oh. families' views. And we are the <coughs> only program that is um, under the Older Americans Act that's mandated to be the voice of the resident. There's many other people who want to say what would be right for the residents, but we're the advocate for the resident in that process. I'd be really interested in hearing if someone watching today perhaps wants to become a volunteer, how, what was the training like? What do you have to do to train to become an well, ombudsman? I, I'm not sure I went through the training. I, I've been there 21 years. Okay. Training programs now, um, Eileen probably can address that better okay. than it's, I can. It's, a, little, it's um, <coughs> a very specific set of classroom activities where we have people in our um, classroom setting for about 30 hours. Um, and then there's a set of uh, joint visits that we do with paid ombudsmen and other volunteers to go out <coughs> and learn about the communities and learn about the type of residents that need our service. Um, there is a certification process uh, for which there's review and some test taking, but the test is pretty simple. It's not something that um, anybody can't pass with uh, the experience of, of having that uh, learning opportunities. There's um, background um, from all walks of life do volunteer work. We've had teachers, we've had librarians, we've had engineers, we've had attorneys, we've had um, homemakers that have never worked outside of the home that just want to give back. 
I uh, am curious to know what I, what the major rights of residence might be. I see that you are wearing a button that you kindly yes. gave me a copy of. Mm -hmm. Speak up, know your rights. I understand this is resident right month. month. Yes. Right. So tell us what the residence rights are. So in federal law, there are some very specific rights for people who are living in nursing homes and assisted living for under state law. Um, you know, you don't give up your right to vote. You don't give up all of the rights that are under the Constitution. But you have extra rights, which include a right to a dignified um, existence, a right for choice, a right to participate in your own care planning. Um, and your own um, decision making. You have a right to privacy that's actually spelled out in the law. Because when you're living in a larger place, there are so many people who are giving care that they may impose the, their own thoughts on you as a resident. And the residents really have a right to tell those that are working at the uh, communities what they want to achieve. Uh, one other qu uh, question I have has to do with confidentiality. Yes. So if a volunteer comes in and the resident share some confidential information, how is that maintained? We cannot do anything without a resident's permission in identifying um, what the issues are, what they want done, uh, until they tell us it's okay for, as the ombudsman to share that with anyone else. So they're protected. Yeah, many yeah. residents are concerned with retaliation if they say something to me and if I talk to the staff. So if they don't want me to talk to the staff, I can't do it. Okay. So we uh, are about empowerment. We want residents to have the information they need in order to speak up for themselves. If they need us by their side, we'll be do, glad to do that. If they need us to do it instead, we will be glad to do it on their behalf. And we attend the care conferences also. I do. Oh, and wonderful. So and invariably, what happens at some of these conferences is the residents there, the families there, the staff is there, and they're talking about the resident in the third person. And I will stop the conference and I will say, you've got the resident here, why don't we ask the resident? So uh, uh, Eileen, if, if someone would like to either become a volunteer for this program, mm -hmm. or if it's a resident who's interested in speaking with an ombudsman, uh, where should they, what's the phone number? The, sim the simplest thing is to give us a call, which is 240-777-3369. That's our main line and we have an ombudsman who answers it live. We also have a presence on Montgomery County's website, which is www.montgomerycountymd.gov forward slash HHS, and that will get you to the Ombudsman okay. program. Well, I want to thank you both very much for being mm -hmm. here today. It's, it's a wonderful program. A lot of uh, senior residents in a lot of these places really benefit from your program, and thank you for telling us about it. Well, thank really you so it. much. Thank you. When we come back, we'll close the show today with a special look at Senior Planet. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, 
tutor, or mentor and make a difference in the life of a child for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live united. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. Have you ever had a question about saving energy in your home but didn't know where to turn? Just ask the expert. No matter the time of year, electronics are always at the top of many wish lists. The great news is that you can get your friends and family the high-tech gifts they want and help fight climate change. All by making one simple choice, Energy Star. Look for the trusted blue label on the hottest products, from smart Ultra HD TVs and tablets to soundbars and wireless speakers. EPA's Energy Star label means you'll save money and use less energy. With an average of 24 electronics products in every home, there are lots of opportunities to save energy in every room of the house. Energy Star certified TVs are 25% more energy efficient than standard ones, and a certified soundbar is 78% more efficient. The next time you're looking for the perfect present, look for the Energy Star. Get more expert advice at energystar.gov. Welcome back to Seniors Today. Senior Planet Montgomery is a program developed to help seniors with technology. Here to tell us more is Ultra Montgomery Director Mitsuko Herrera and Senior Planet Program Manager Allison Adams. Welcome to Seniors Today. Thank you, Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. So tell us about Senior Planet. So Senior Planet Montgomery is the county's approach to train older adults to use technology. Um, the focus of it really is on how you can use uh, technology for daily living. When you, when you really sort of think about within the county, um, that 20% of the county is going to be over the age of 60. And we have so many new advances uh, in ways to handle your health care, living independently that are dependent on technology. So we looked at that and thought, well, it's really important that this target segment of the population feel comfortable using it. So the program is designed that there can be multi-week classes where you can come in twice a week for 10 weeks or five weeks. You get a chance to really have some repetition, learn um, how to use something and feel really confident at the end. And then we also offer single day classes where people can come in and take a deep dive into one particular subject that they're interested in. Well, that's wonderful. What, what kind of, of, of uh, courses do you teach? What, what are the topics? So our basic courses, iPad and computer basics, um, really start from the very beginning. Um, you know, maybe you've never used a computer before or an iPad before, or um, you know, the computer that you may have used at work is vastly different to the technology that you're using today, or you know, consumer technologies. So we start at the very basics, and then we go through kind of what can you what can you do with that? What's practical in your everyday life? So we talk about how to find information online, health information. It's a big one. Um, you know, looking up medications, uh, how to find a, a doctor, um, as well as banking information, right, how to stay safe online, um, especially as more and more bill pay goes online or check your benefits, it's all online now. It's hard to find a person to actually pick up a phone if you call customer right. support sometimes. Um, and then more fun things as well, right, how to watch TV online, um, how to connect with friends and family. Um, and then in addition to those kind of uh, holistic courses, we also have some specialty courses as well that cover financial management, um, connecting to your communities, um, and some other kind of higher level things like streaming and smart TVs or online shopping. So let me ask you a question. What if someone doesn't have a computer or, or an iPad or a tablet of any sort? How would they, could they take advantage of these courses? They can. So we provide those um, at the class uh, so that you have them there. We um, are trying to work so that when you come to the locations where we have the class, that those tablets are available outside of class hours so that you have the ability to practice. And ultimately, we're trying to grow support for the program so that we can work on people um, getting devices at a reduced cost or on a payment plan so they can get it. Some of the things also that Allison was talking about and those specific things can be focused also on things like money management. Oh, so, we, so we have a class where we come in and we do a little um, survey at the beginning so we can kind of assess how much did you learn. Um, and in that class, a third of the people who came to take it were spending more than they were bringing in an in income. And by the end of the class, everybody was living within their income. They oh. had learned 
how to use budgeting, online tools, how you can save money um, using certain things that are available to you online. Um, we also, in the um, single day classes, a very popular one we have is protecting your information online, which is, I think, a big topic that mm -hmm. uh, really important uh, because it, uh, many seniors are afraid. Mm -hmm. have fear of, of doing that for security reasons. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, one of the things that we found in the class is that 85% of the people after taking the class, they feel more confident. Wonderful. They feel more confident about their independent living and they feel more connected to the community and their family and friends. What would you say um, are your biggest challenges in, in having developed a class like this? What are your biggest challenges? I think certainly that um, lack of confidence or even reluctance for adopting new technologies, either because um, you know we're we're afraid of what we don't know, what's unfamiliar, mm -hmm. and then also there are some real s security concerns with being online. Right, you hear about hacks that it's it's a something to be concerned about for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, that I think that's it can be hard to get somebody in the door, right? But then once you have that knowledge, you know, once you have the skills, that fear kind of fades away, and people are much more likely to explore or be willing to um, kind of try things that they never would have before and a class. A lot of people coming, what they felt like is they really didn't have anybody else to go mm -hmm. to to get help. When either it's hard to get to their family member or their family member comes and it's kind of at lightning speed and then here it is. Got it? Yeah. Done. <laughs> well, um, I'd like to mention that we are a very fortunate uh, county in that in addition to this wonderful program that you're running, we have uh, resources in the libraries mm -hmm. at several of the lifelong learning organizations like OASIS and OSHER at Johns Hopkins mm -hmm. and uh, Montgomery College that also have technology courses. So there's a, a really important um, area that, that seniors need to be thinking about and it's wonderful that you're doing this. If someone would like to sign up, um, how, do they, how would they go about that? So our classes start throughout the year. Um, so you can check at your local library or senior center to see if we're there. Um, but the easiest way is to go to our website, which is seniorplanet.org forward slash Montgomery. And is there a phone number? Or um, there is. So our student hotline number is 240-753-0676. Perfect. Okay. Well, I know a lot of people watching this show will take great interest in this topic. I know a lot of people who are, you know, who need to learn more about it and, um, and want to learn more about it. So it's terrific what you're doing. Thank you very much. And that's it today for this month's Senior Today. Don't forget that you can access a great deal of information about county services for seniors by going to Montgomery County Senior website at montgomerycountymd.gov seniors or call the Senior Resource Line at 240-777-3000. And as always, thank you for watching Seniors Today. We'd do anything for kids. Yet one in five children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org.